Inside the Birds is back. What's up, everybody? Jeff Mosher and Adam Kaplan for another Inside the Birds presented by our friends at Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City. It is the exclusive Jersey Shore Resort of Inside the Birds. And Adam, we have finally reached the point where we can say it. The NFL Draft is next week. Yeah. Next Thursday night, which means between this podcast... And NFL draft, there's not going to be too many more Inside the Birds podcasts. So we have a lot of information to go through um, in the next two before we get to all of our NFL draft preview. But it's here, man. It's We're getting down to the wire. Yeah, we'll go inside the draft next week. Actually, actually this, I'm sorry. The, yeah, next next Monday, we'll go inside with Andrew DiCecco, our insider mock draft. Mm-hmm. Uh, this Wednesday, we've got another show. Today's show, we'll, we're going to take an inside look at tendencies of the Eagles over the years and uh, under Harry Roseman as general manager, something we've not done before, but uh, we thought about this. This is something that teams do. They study everybody's tendencies. Uh, I, another GM tipped me off on something that they study. All all GMs do this, is they look at each other's teams and what their what their pro- proclivity is to do. So we're going to look into that. Uh, that's going to be fun. And yeah, you're right. It's uh, it's close. In fact, uh, we did that live stream last Wednesday with Andrew Dechecko for Patreon. We loved doing that. That was. That was a lot of fun, and we figured we're at the two-week mark. Let's get Andrew involved, and that was that was fun. Yeah, and his uh, breakdowns are always great. He's been doing a wonderful job. I hope everybody is checking out on the YouTube and podcast platform the Draft Dreams series that he does with college prospects. He tries to find small, mostly school, small school guys, but he did get an Ohio State safety, Josh Proctor, in there as well. And he usually finds guys with amazing stories of either adversity that they've overcome or tremendous athletic testing at a school you may have never heard of like Slippery Rock University, uh, things like that. He's just doing a fantastic job and he asks great questions, get good stories. So make sure you're tuning in to Draft Dreams. And of course, Andrew will be part of our NFL draft coverage. We're still ironing out everything on that, um, but we'll have more probably by the next podcast, an entire schedule. What we normally do is do recaps after the picks or after the night is over on day two, day three, we'll have the entire and inside the birds NFL draft pre-schedule for you coming up in a uh, very future podcast. Uh, We continue to put contract information. Adam's doing a great job for our Patreon members. If you want to see all the details and the depths of the contracts that the Eagles signed, and they signed another one, another guy we'll talk about in this podcast. Uh, You have to be a Patreon member and you can see it. And of course that's patreon.com slash inside the birds to join. Yeah. By the way, that after the draft, those aren't just recaps folks. We, we give you the first word on how the player will be used inside the, the Eagles defensive or offensive schemes depending obviously who they draft on side of the ball yeah we 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 give you exactly what their thinking is uh this is something we've done heck we were able to give the insight on how the aj brown trade not only came came to be but what their thinking was why they did it how they would use them literally right after the draft right after that first round so we're going to do that we're going to go as we always do we go inside every decision Mm -hmm. why they did it how these players fit in uh, something we've done for the last seven years, and we'll do that uh, for these picks. And now, obviously, if they don't make a pick uh, in the first round, which they've done before, they've traded out. Uh, and obviously, that AJ Brown was a substitute for the draft pick that year. But we'll 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 explain why they did it, and we'll preview kind of what the best picks or best players could be for the coming rounds whenever they are scheduled to pick. Yeah, it's a good point, Adam, that you uh, made here at the top of the show is that, you know, there are two things that are very true about the Eagles um, and that could apply to their pick on Thursday night, which is scheduled to be 22nd overall. Uh, The first thing you could say is they may not, they they likely won't be picking 22nd overall because they've made so many trades up and down in the first round over the last few years. They very rarely pick in their initial slot. And then the second thing is that we're going to get to in this podcast is when they do pick between 20 or 25, at least in recent history, it's not been their home run territory. They have not been a great drafting team when they've had to pick between 20 and 25. Uh, some good ones, some not so good ones, some memorable uh, misses we'll, we'll talk about as we go down the line. So some might argue that it would be better if Howie did trade up because to get out of that little window area where he has not seen his best success. Yeah, it really it it it's really interesting if you go back to when Howie was the first GM. Yes, he didn't have control, and he did for 21, 2010, 2011, 2012. They were still trading up. They did it in twenty ten when they traded up for BG, and uh, we'll get into that and what that meant and why they did it. 
But yeah, it, it just varies on the year. Look, they traded up for Devontae Smith. Home run might be a Hall of Fame player. Sometimes when they traded up, they could they've missed. Mm-hmm. Just did, there are some tendencies we've picked up, uh, which we kind of didn't quite know when we were starting to do this this segment, which is going to be int- very fascinating because we had to go back and and find out uh, what they were thinking and talk to people who were actually there then. Mm-hmm. Uh, some things we weren't quite sure of, but we were able to confirm. So fascinating uh the tendencies that the eagles have had over the years but it, it sort of varied from one year to next but there's certain things that we definitely know that they look at doing absolutely all right as we mentioned the eagles continue to add in free agency at positions where they could use uh good bodies and good depth and they certainly did so at tight end this week signing a veteran tight end cj i always pronounce i'm going to try to get the name right cj uzoma is that right uzama no it's uzama uzama in right, fact he's uzama He's corrected people like a hundred times. That's how I knew it because I, I remember hearing him say, he goes, no, it's Uzama. I don't know why people can't get it right. Uh, so, Uzama. Uh, it, is, it, yeah. it does feel tough. I feel like there was an NFL player who had a similar last name that ended in Oma instead of Ama. And maybe that's where, where I'm, Ifani Moma, is that maybe the one I'm thinking of? Remember former Eagle? Ifani Moma, Moma, right. That's yeah, right. Yeah. Former yeah. Eagle. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, CJ but, so Uzama. with yeah. uh Uzama, yeah, not ooh, it's you, uh, always you. In fact, Uzama. I called, I called him for two years or three years with the Bengals. Uzama, I didn't know, you know, and he 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 corrected it, so it's Uzama. So here's what happened uh, with the Jets. So he's what we call a wide tight end. You, people used to make fun of us at saying how important it is. It sure as heck is to be a inline tight end. He got paid eight million a year. That when I say he got paid, he he signed a deal for eight million a year. Most of his first two years were fully guaranteed. And he had a pretty significant role his first year. Then he he dropped off and he had some injuries. And uh, he was one of the highest paid in, uh, wide tight ends in NFL history. He could catch the ball, though. He had, a, he had one season where he caught nearly 50 balls with the Bengals. But he's a really good inline blocker. But he's had some injuries. He's older now. He's 31, near the end of his career. But with Jack Stoll, this is what they did, as we understand it. They look to replace Jack Stoll's role as their wide tight end. Stoll was, that's what Stoll did. He signed to be a wide tight end for the Giants. And Uzama will replace that role here. And the Eagles, by the way, they tried to, to resign Stoll, but the Giants swooped in late and, and signed him uh, because he, he thinks he's going to have a bigger role there with the Giants that remains to be seen. But that's what Uzama will do at 31 years old. Yeah, it's interesting because, I don't know, I mean, uh, we have to wait for all the details of the contract to come out. One-year deal probably not a lot of guaranteed money, but for someone of his expertise, and you mentioned he had a really good year with the Bengals his last year there, you would think he'd be making more than a Jack Stoll made with the Giants, but maybe not. I don't know. And if he is, you would wonder, did the Eagles always have this in mind that they let Jack Stoll walk because they were going to pay Uzama? No, someone no. That, they that, tried that's what, to that's, that's what makes it weird. If you weren't, why didn't you just pay Stoll then? You know what I'm saying? And no, because the Giants I, offered more. Because the because here's the thing though. On your point, Usam is a proven player. It's a good point. It's fair. Mm-hmm. Now he's old, way older, and he's also had some injuries. And he's kind of fallen off here. Uh, for a backup tight end, you're not going to give more than a million or two. And he he made a ton of money over his first two years with the Jets. It's just a chance to try to win a Super Bowl. Yeah. That's really it. And. Uh, they, they have Jeremy Ruckert, who they drafted two years ago in the third round. They want to look at Kenny Abo is more of an athletic tight end for the Jets. And Conklin's their starter. He's more of a move tight end. They have Zach Kuntz, who was drafted last year out of Old Dominion, uh, who's a more of a wide tight end. So, yeah, they, they're they moving on. And the Eagles have a chance to get a guy who's, by the way, been to the Super Bowl with the Bengals. Don't forget about that. So mm-hmm. uh, he's got a lot of experience. This is, a, this is a nice signing at this point. Look, he's not guaranteed to make it. Right. But the fact of the matter is they need an inline blocker, and this is the guy. He's a pretty good blocker, pr- pretty good at it. Yeah, so he replaces that, that like you said, the wide tight end role. So you have Dallas Goddard, you have C.J. Uzama, right, as your Y, and then it sort of leaves also a fight between now Alberto, Grant Calcaterra, and Noah Tungiai, right? So those three plus Uzama. Oh, I just did it twice in a row, Uzama. I'm not, now I'm all good on it. Um, those three plus Uzama <laughs> are four guys battling for two spots, essentially. Now, would you think Uzama has the leader, is the leader in the Y clubhouse because he can block? There's no, I mean, the only other Y, the EJ Jenkins is, I don't know, he's more of a move tight end. He's the other tight end of the right. six. Uh, Tungi is the only Y tight end they have other than Uzama. Mm-hmm. 
it'd be very now now one thing we have to add it th- none of these players preclude the eagles in any way from drafting a tight end correct they absolutely could draft a tight end as high as the second round absolutely would not surprise me in the least uh it just it, it, again depth has nothing to do with how many players you have at a position it's the quality of the player you could have 10 players in the position if you only have two guys who are good you're, you're not good enough so right. it's all about quality not quantity all right good stuff there all right Uzama the latest to join on the Eagles and um so the the tight end room looks it's it's pretty interesting I I would like to you know I'm I'm still sort of in this mode Adam where I think that Alberto intrigues me especially with a new coordinator he obviously did not fit in with the offense well last year it never clicked for him but he's got some talent he's got some abilities a big guy so I'm wondering if in Kellen Moore's offense we'll see a different Albert O compete in o, in OTAs and mm. in, in training camp. Uh, we'll see on that. But that's uh, the situation at tight end right now. Let's get into the first uh, the picks that we were going to go through. Take a walk down memory lane um, as with Howie Roseman picking. Before we do that, let's stop and hear a word from our friends at Ocean Casino Resort in Atlantic City. Go to get your game on. Go for the beers. Go for the cheers. Go for the hit and the hits. Go for the stakes and the stakes. Go to get your parlay on. Go to get your party on. Go for the scene. Go for the screens. Go for the gallery. Go for the win. Go to Ocean. Visit theoceanac.com to plan your visit. All right. We are going to go back in time for when Howie Roseman first became GM and started making picks for as the Philadelphia Eagles. Now, this is a control well that's what i was going to say he didn't this this is not really he he did not have personnel control until midway through his actual gm tenure um but he had say he had influence he just did not originally he was not the guy who made the first pick And, and a lot of times adam when we go back to like his first draft as gm which is 2010 we always say that Brandon Graham was Howie's first pick. And guess guess what? Sometimes Howie says, you know, that was my first guy, my first draft. But Howie didn't have control and did not was not the guy who definitively made the pick. That was still Andy Reid in charge. 100%. In fact, we're told the first year that he really had a lot of say was 2020, 2012 with Fletcher Cox. It was Andy Reid's last year. Uh, but 2010, yeah, he had input. But you're right. Andy, Andy had control. He turned the card in, so to speak. Uh, that draft, now, this was interesting. They traded up to get BG. And everybody, we, we don't need, this is not a review. We don't do reviews. We go inside. And this is what their thinking was. We were told then. They liked JPP, you know, the length. But they thought BG had a little bit more explosion. Yes, JPP was longer. They thought Graham was a more developed football player. Now, obviously, it looked bad early on. In the end, Graham outlasted JPP, and he's been a better football player. Uh, did, certainly didn't look like that the first three or four years. <laughs> uh, I mean, everybody knows the heat that uh, BG took and the Eagles did, but uh, BG outlasted him is pretty remarkable. And uh, th- so this goes on what uh, Joe Banner told us over the years when he, former Eagles president, when he come on our show. They just believed in their their research when Joe and Jeffrey. Lori came in 1994 is that you win on the lines offensive defensive line so they stayed with that belief and really when you look at it I mean I, I people could talk about Earl Thomas all they want and I don't know that he makes all of fame his career really ended prematurely mm. for whatever reason it, it in the end if you look at it if you just go year to year to year to year and 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 look at what they did in that draft and it got criticized early Staying with their belief of getting edge rushers, that turned out to be the right decision. Didn't look like it early on here because they passed on a potential great safety. And Earl Thomas was pretty pretty darn good for many years. Mm-hmm. BG was the one who lasted. I mean, JPP and uh, Kareem Jackson, by the way, still going on. But I would I would argue uh, BG is the better football player. And then they didn't get a chance at Trent Williams. He went forward to Trent uh, to Washington. So Endeavor McCourty went later. Uh, then the Eagles picked McCourty, BG, they trade up at 13. McCourty won 27. Really good football player. But honestly, if you look at that draft, that was a heck of a pick, BG. Uh, you, you just, you had to, you had to hang in there with them. Yeah. And that's yeah. why saying a guy's a bust after two years is so pointless and stupid. 
let unless it's unbelievably obvious, which it was not. True, true. I might nitpick with you a little on Jason Paul Pierre versus Pierre Paul versus uh Brandon Graham because I would say Brandon's it's sort of like comparing when you like baseball players longevity to a guy who is more dominant in a shorter time period because Pierre Paul's best years are better than Brandon Graham years by far. I mean, he's had a 16 and a half sack year. I know that I'm not yep. looking. I just know he had one and yeah. a couple of 12 and a half sack. I think he's probably got like 95 to a hundred career sacks, but I, I do get your point in that they worked out for each. Like the, Brandon Graham is a great idea, model of like, if you, and, and really this is on Brandon, Brandon struggled and he fell into traps and then he turned it around he finally became the player they expected him to become. You're right. It just took a couple of years. And I do believe, I agree with you in that he's sort of, un, if you just look at Brandon in the stacks, you're under stat and sacks, you're underrating him because he's always been one of the best two way, you know, run defender slash pass rushing defensive ends in the league. He's been phenomenal. And to have the versatility that he had earlier in his career to move inside and rush from nickel, uh, which is what he did almost all Super Bowl year is an underrated trait and that has also been very very good yeah fair enough yeah i I mean bg outlasted him and again you could you also stay with the same team that's really important to note that is this isn't like major league baseball or any other sport guys if a guy lasts first of all a guy lasts in the league 10 years that's pretty amazing to play his entire career with only the eagles jpp giants bucks ravens he was actually with a couple teams last season Oh, wow. So this is, so this is about J- Jason Pierre-Paul. He kept up. You're right. He was a better pass rusher over a 10-year mm-hmm. period. BG showed a little bit better versatility in a way. Stand-up pass rusher. He he played also uh, inside. Also came alive in the playoffs as well. It, it, it's it's certainly subjective when mm-hmm. you look at both, but it's about longevity too. That, that matters in a big way. And it's not like two years ago, BG was incredible. Right. And Jason Pierre Paul only made the Pro Bowl twice. What did BG make it once or twice? I think about the same. Yeah, twice. They both have two rings, right? Pierre Pierre Paul won that second ring with Tampa. Oh, uh, with think. Brady, probably so. Probably. Yeah, yeah. So they both got two rings. Um, hey, listen, they both had really good careers. You can't, you, you know, when you when you look back on those that draft, you say both those guys worked out, and Earl Thomas certainly worked out for for Seattle. The end was not good for him, um, but still worked out uh, for them to go to a su- two Super Bowls and win one of them. So that's 2010. Uh, Andy Reid had control. That was really Howie's first draft that he was involved with at GM. 2011, Andy Reid still had control, um, Adam. And, the, you know, this is sort of – this would be Andy Reid's second to last draft and and sort of where the downfall started to begin here for him. Yeah, so what we were told with Danny Watkins is this, and we actually checked on this last week just to make sure – Everyone wanted him. There wasn't anyone who was there. If they're telling you they didn't want him, that's revisionist history. That's not that's not true. Uh, everyone was unified and looking at our notes here. What happened? And they would later admit that they have they had to stop overvaluing the senior ball. I was there. You probably were in 2011. Danny Watkins was incredible at the senior ball in that year. They stayed on their belief about the Lions offense and defensive. Watkins was an older football player. They completely missed on the football character. He didn't love football. That was a bad miss. Mm. Uh, what they here? Here's something that I totally forgot about. Someone reminded me of this, and I'm like, really? So, right after they picked, and this guy might be a Hall of Famer someday. Didn't think so until I thought about it. But Cam Jordan, who's still playing at playing at 35, was right after them. That's a bad miss. They stayed to their core of wanting offensive linemen or mm-hmm. defensive linemen, but. Why they didn't think Cam Jordan can do it, I have is beyond me. I, I this is 13 years ago, so I don't know exactly. They also passed guys who went later in that round. Jimmy Smith, who was a good corner of the Ravens. There were some character knocks on him, but he had a good career. And Cam Hayward, still going strong. Cam Hayward, another good player. Yeah, no, Cam Jordan though would have fit that what they ran defensively to a yeah. T. It's it is mildly surprising to look back on it. More than mildly surprising to look back at it and. And think that that he was not the the Eagles' cup of tea compared to Danny Watkins there, which all right. So let's let's call it like it is then, Adam. Danny Watkins was a guy who was at Baylor, played tackle uh, mostly, I believe. They drafted him to play right guard because I don't think they felt he could play tackle, if if I'm not Correct. mistaken. Correct. Yep. They needed a right guard in the worst way because I already remember how the year before had ended 
Um, I believe that, you know, the Sean Andrews ex- was, was hurt all year long, if I'm not mistaken. And they were get running in guys like Nick Cole and uh, <laughs> Max Gene Gilly. I mean, they were, they were just so beat up at right guard. They really needed a right guard. And so that to me is where you look at and say, yeah, they can say positional value and all, but that was such a need pick for them. And that, that to me, you know, unless somebody tells you different, it feels like it was a very obvious need pick, which you should never do. Yep, hundred percent. That would that 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 was the first time in since Roseman's been general manager. I know he didn't make the pick. That they clearly, though, during his tenure as a general manager with the title, they clearly drafted for need over the best player. Now they were playing the wide nine then in 2011. Jason Babin was a wide nine king, as we would later find out. Trent Cole was still a good player. And Jaquay Parker, you might remember him, and Daryl Tapp is now a, a coach. They they clearly, again, the draft is always about the future. If they would have just drafted Cam Jordan, can you imagine Cam Jordan and BG together? Are you serious? Oh my God, with the with the and the, the late years of Trent Cole, I mean that that would have been really nice. That's unbelievable. I, I had oh never even thought God. of that until just now. But that's what happens when you don't draft the best player available. And tr- for the future, it absolutely was a need. I mean, it wasn't a major need. Right. But I've I've just learned this from talking to GMs over the years. Like when you start drafting for need and you don't think about the future with the best player on the board, you're going to miss. And unfortunately, that was a miss. Yeah, unfortunately. So that brings us to 2012. And at this time, you know, you're you're in 2012, you're not getting what you want out of Brandon Graham. And you can already tell that Danny Watkins is not going to be what you want. And so you're going into 2012 knowing that you absolutely need to hit a home run in this draft. And it was Andy Reid's last draft. And at least in the first round, Adam, he swung and hit pretty well on this one. And I we t- how he had a lot of, have more influence here. He did. He on this trip. This one is interesting. We were told they were not, they, it, I'm not sure exactly the reason, just what we were told is they, they made a decision. They were not going to trade up to get Cox. If he went, they went to Kansas city at 11 where they, the chiefs unfortunately took Don Terry Poe. Then they did. Then they were they that they weren't going to trade into that spot. They were not going to trade up for him. Uh, they had it planned out pretty well. Uh, this was a home run potential and a, a pro football hall of famer. They stayed true to the roots on the offensive and defensive lines. I got to give him credit. This guy is an absolute stud. Seventy sacks for his career. Just retired. What an amazing career he had. Another guy who played his entire career with Eagles. BG and Cox. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's it's awesome. Now, the, and honestly, if you look at the rest of the round, it's not like they passed up on anyone. Michael Brockers went, uh, and, and Michael Floyd. Brockers is okay. Was it just an average player? Mm-hmm. Melvin Ingram's still going. Nice player. Nothing, nothing close to, to uh, Cox. Chandler Jones uh, flamed out, unfortunately. Had some production. Riley Reef is still going, but was nothing. Not not a great player. Kevin Zeitler's still going. Not a great player. Harrison Smith now. But again, he went way later, 29. I, I, it doesn't matter. It's too far down. Mm-hmm. This is an incredible draft pick. Great job by Roseman then and, and everyone else who was there. By the way, this is Joe Banner's last draft and Andy Reid's last draft. It is. It is. And by the way, this is sort of a time when you're on the beat like I was uh, at that point, you know, yeah. where you're really starting to understand how the Eagles' identity, which remains in place right now of what they like in the draft, is starting to take shape. Because everything, when you when you talk about a draft philosophy and team building, you have to understand it has to be built step by step. And Adam, if you remember in Andy Reid's first five years, it's not like everything was offensive, defensive line. His first first round pick was McNabb. His second one was Corey Simon. His third one was Freddie Mitchell. So that's three different positions right there. Yep. His fourth one was Lito Shepard. So that's four different positions. Corner, right cornerback. <laughs> cornerback, right. So no one knows what the philosophy in the draft is at that point. And then McDougal in 2003 was a D end um, who unfortunately had a terrible story of being shot. We all know. And, um, and then they get Sean Andrews in 2004 and Patterson in 2005. So now you're like, okay, we see the Bunkley in 2006. We, we see that you like to build in the trenches, but if you do remember, then they went two years in a row. I've never seen a team do this before since two years in a row without a first round draft pick where they traded out in 2007 um, their first pick was Kevin Cobb in the second round. And in 2008, their first pick was Trevor laws. Uh, Mm -hmm. The reason why they lost one of the first round picks was because they trade for Jason Peters. 
The uh-huh. reason why I lost the other is because they simply just trade out of the first round. That's the Kevin Cobb draft where they trade with Dallas, I want to believe. So it's not really until this stretch here um, that we just recap, right? 2000, 2008, they come, they, they get a first round pick again. And I think that was Macklin. Uh, I'm sorry, 2009, Macklin. So again, like, you know, their first pick in first, first round pick in three years, you know, it's not alignment. It's, it's Jeremy Macklin. And then we get into that offensive and defensive line succession there between with, with Brandon Graham and then Danny Watkins and then Fletcher Cox. And then of course, when we get into the next two picks, they're going to be similar in that they're trench picks. Yeah. The, that's the tendency that we've picked up here. There's no question that offensive defense, defensive lines is something that they've super value mm-hmm. and you've said for a couple of years now the ravens don't look at it that way they just go the best player on their board it doesn't matter what position it is right uh there there's there's you know there, there's definitely a lot of thought that goes into that that's that's great uh but it, it always depends on where, what your future looks like at a position but so that was 2012 and 2013 is the first year roseman had control uh they took lane johnson uh chip kelly wanted Deion jordan the dolphins knew this Mm-hmm. They traded up for him. Eagles lucked out. They got a Hall of Fame player in Lane Johnson. Yes, Lane, Lane will make it. Lane Lane will make the Hall of Fame. He he had to get through the off the field stuff first couple first few years. He's had some injuries, but we could argue over the last ten years that there aren't more than maybe two linemen or better. Trent Williams might be one of them. Lane Johnson is an, an incredible football player. Again, they're staying to the roots. Now Lane was drafted to be Jason Pierce' first replacement. <laughs> We'll get into this next one later, but mm-hmm. how he stayed here, he stayed in his roots. Um, and this is what they went with. And this is a great pick. And by the way, Chip, this is Chip Kelly's first year. He had say, but it was how he's called. Right. And now we're also seeing this trend we're going to discuss develop where when they pick in the top 10, top 15, whether it's Brandon Graham, Fletcher Cox, Lane Johnson, good. They've been able they, they've gotten what they've wanted here. You start getting into the 20s when he took Danny Watkins. And then as we get into the next draft after Lane Johnson, 2014, they go past rusher. Now, this is not – this is a Howie Roseman draft. It is. But Howie Roseman is drafting for Chip Kelly's system. They're running a 3-4. And this was such a wild draft, Adam, in 2014 when they take Marcus Smith. I think they traded down, right? Were they at 22 and went to 26? Do I have those numbers correct? I don't think so. No? What what, what was the – I'll tell you in a sec. I'm sorry. No, no, but I'm I do some but, of this from memory. But go ahead. But that draft, in fact, they tried so bad desperately. They were, they were 26. They tried to trade out because what happened was that's right. That's right. They actually tried to trade up. Uh, they tried. They they were working on a trade to get Brandon Cooks. Mm-hmm. They wanted Ha Ha Clinton Dix, and he, he didn't turn out to be a very good football player. Right. In his career. Uh, but everything they tried just flamed out. And this is why those trade calls before the first a couple of weeks before where we are now are so important because you got to have this stuff worked out. So what happened was uh, when those guys went off the board, they, they they couldn't trade down. They tried. Marcus Smith had a second round grade, but it's kind of like we've said, they're only usually 12 to 16, sometimes they're 18 first round graded players. Marcus Smith was a guy that, that, that um, by the way, Chip Kelly, the way we understood it then, and I've, I've heard this since, that Chip was informed where they were going. He was he 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 said, uh, hey, I'm good with that. Billy Davis was the defense coordinator. They were 34. They wanted Marcus Smith to fit that. And unfortunately, this pick was kind of forced. And mm-hmm. they wound up missing, unfortunately, that year. And this is this is a this is the famous 2014 draft where a lot of a lot of receivers drafted. We mentioned Brandon Cooks is still going strong, OBJ, uh, and then after that, uh, honestly, the, the close of the round they did there was no one really that good. In fact, Kelvin Benjamin was a bust. Yep. John Buchanan was sort of a bust. Jimmy Ward's still going strong, but he's hurt a lot. Bradley Roby's still playing. Teddy Bridgewater had a short career, had a bad injury. Now mm-hmm. you could say, well. Maybe they should have taken Joel Batonio went the next round early to the Browns at third pick in that in the second round. Demarcus Tank Lawrence uh, had some character issues. Uh, he dropped the mm-hmm. second round. Still go, still playing. He's had a lot of injuries. Mm-hmm. That, that's a tough call. I mean, that's a tough call. The, the fact, but they missed. No excusing that they missed on Marcus Smith. Yeah, very much so. I I agree with you on that. And um, as I always say, people look at that draft and they focus on 
missing on Marcus Smith. And what gets overshadowed is that they took Jordan Matthews at 42nd overall. And I believe Devonte Adams went 50, 53rd as I look now, right. <laughs> it's like, Oh man, yeah. <laughs> there's another wide receiver who was pretty good. That also uh, went later in that draft too, that, you know, that uh, Allen Robinson went later in the second round as well. So, but uh, Hey, Jordan Matthews, Jordan Matthews had some good years, but obviously the knee, uh, he had good years as a slot receiver in Chip Kelly's scheme. It wasn't, it, it was a little bit more, I want to say schemed up than, than it was natural talent. Oh, you mean, oh, on oh, no. Jordan Matthews, Jordan Matthews. Yeah. And they went up trading him, but just getting, before we move on to the 2015 draft, mm-hmm. Devonte Adams, his time speed wasn't bad, but it looked, it looked, Teams just didn't think he ran well enough off tape. Mm. That's why he dropped the second round. I don't know that he'll make the Hall of Fame, but he's obviously had a great career. So, so what have we learned so far? What, what the tendencies are clearly offensive, defensive lines, mm-hmm. or edge rusher. Now Smith could have played with his hand down as a DN, but t- clubs saw him by body type as a stand-up pass rusher. And this is a need pick. You you you, you talked about it earlier. Danny Watkins was a need pick. Miss Marcus Smith was a need pick miss so they you 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 start reaching you start going for guys who didn't have a high enough grade you're you're reaching for need and you miss there we go all right so in 2015 this is not a howie roseman draft he has been banished to the other side of the building as everybody widely knows by now chip kelly is the czar of the franchise and it is his first and only first round pick as the czar of the eagles and he takes our friend Nelson Aguilar with the 20th overall pick. This is an interesting one only because the way it started, it looked like another terrible bust pick. Yeah. Uh, and then after Chip Kelly leaves, Nelson Aguilar blossoms into a, one of the best slot receivers in the league, Adam. Um, and then you're finally, it almost feels like a Brandon Grammy story as he's on the come up, he's going to be good. But then his years after the Super Bowl. Had to go back outside because of injuries, dropped a lot of passes, and um, but he still managed to just stick around on one year deals. And every once in a while, you're watching a game on a Sunday, he's playing for somebody and he and he's snagging a touchdown or going for 80 yards. He's 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 not a bust. Um, he's just a, a, a what would you say, average NFL wide receiver? Yeah, what happens? They pick up his fifth year option. I remember being like 10 million in 2019. It was it was, yes. it was a lot of money, and he as you, as you were talking about, he didn't quite live up to it. But he had a huge year for the Raiders, almost 19 yards per catch in 2020. Uh, Parlay that into a, a big deal with with the Patriots. Only lasted two years there, and they played with the Ravens last season. Now, you, look, he's 30 now. Boy, he's time flown by here. But uh, good good story to revive his career after the uh, off the field issue that happened. What was it? 2016. We don't need to go into what it was. Some of the people know. Yeah. 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 So. so he's been um, fun. So uh, this is one that's hard to, again, you don't classify it as a hit. You don't classify it. Well, I don't classify it as a miss is what I should say. You can say it's a hit because they won a Super Bowl with him. Right. And he played really well that year. Yeah. Oh yeah. Was, yeah. 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 Sure. yeah it's, it wasn't, it was not a bad pick. And again, this is the 20th pick, not the third pick. So um, not a bad pick there, but by Chip Kelly, it just took a little while and it was inconsistent uh, while it was going on. All right. So yeah. go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, so that was Ed Manowitz, by the way, who was the personnel director. He he basically ran personnel. He's now an agent, a coaching agent. He has uh, D'Amico Ryan's, uh, uh, another former Eagle, as a client. He he is uh, mostly coaching clients. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ed. Um, by the way, I just want to go back to what we were saying about the 2014 draft. Mm-hmm. They did trade down. The Browns took Manziel at 22nd. That was originally where the Eagles Oh, were. did they? Yeah. It, what, what happened is you were right that – they were there at 22, but the guys that we mentioned, Cooks went off the board, That's Clinton Dix went off the board. And when those guys went off the board, Howie just decided to trade down to get what he can get. But then at that point, at 20, like you just said, there weren't a whole lot of great players available, and he went with the pass rusher because they needed a pass rusher. Oh, they that, that's an outside how, linebacker to fit his system. Right, that was Brandon Smith. But that's why, okay, that's why the, the Browns went. Now I remember, that's why uh, Mansell won at 22. The Browns, what the hell are they thinking? <laughs> the Browns, Terrible only the job. Browns, my friend. Evaluation, but yeah. So, All right, so on be... to, yeah, on to 2016. Howie is back under control. They're rebuilding. Doug Peterson is the head coach. They make a slew of trades, if we all remember. First was with Miami, 
And then with who did they trade to number two with? Me now? two, yeah. They at least two, right? Yes, they went from like something to well eight to two. Somehow, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't somehow they trade with Miami and they they moved Byron? What was his name? Yes, um, Byron Maxwell. Maxwell. Right. How the hell? Right. Why the Dolphins did that is beyond me. Yeah, didn't they get Kiko also in that draft? I mean, in that in that trade was Kiko Alonso. Uh... Might be. I know people will tell us on YouTube if they could remember. But I'm sure. Bottom, bottom line to move on here. Uh, how he re regained control. He made a series of trades as you talked about. Look, Wentz is not a bust. They nailed it. He got a second contract. Got a mega contract. Now later, he turned out to be a disappointment, obviously because he fell off completely, mm -hmm. for a variety of reasons. But we're not. We don't revisit here. This is all about finding something out here. So right. Um, well. So what they did was th this was a this was they were going to get a quarterback. That's what this was about. They were getting a quarterback because they had to have a quarterback. They didn't have mm -hmm. their future quarterback. Um, so they they felt like Sam Bradford, unfortunately, because of his injury history, was not going to be that guy. And Carson Wentz was that. So it worked out for what they tried to do. I mean, it absolutely worked out. And in 2017, of course, he was great before he got hurt. Uh, but the first draft back for Howie, they went. But they, they put the defensive and offensive lines on hold. And they went with a pick for the future in Carson Wentz. There you go. And by the way, I just Googled it. They went from 13 to 8 with Miami by giving up Kiko Alonso, Byron Maxwell, and the 13th pick to get mm. the pick. And then when they traded to two, Adam, it was with the Cleveland Browns. So if there's another trend in this draft that we're not, <laughs> we're not, we haven't really talked about, oh, it's wow. the trades Browns. with the Miami who, who went over them to get Deion Jordan. Right. And then <laughs> missed on that. And then obviously the Cleveland Browns with the Manziel. And then a year later uh, for Carson Wentz. Unbelievable. And then a couple of years later, it wound up, it'll be the, the Saints that we'll talk about making some trades on uh, with the Eagles to in the draft and, and not really capitalizing on those. All right. So, let's move to 2017. Let's go to yeah, 2017. Let's do it. 2017. So yeah, go ahead. So how I use control, obviously, as he has, he has for through 2013, uh, 2023. So this was a unified pick with Derek Barnett, best pass rusher by numbers at Ten University of Tennessee history. Uh, there, there were some concerns with his size, arm length. The, the guy they passed up on was Jonathan Allen, who's still going strong, who's a D tackle. Uh, they just were going for a pass rusher. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they should have gone with Allen, who's the best player, but people say, well, they had, they had Fletcher Cox, true, but this is, they just didn't go with the best player there they went for a knee pick and it, it would turn out to be a miss yeah yeah it is i and i feel for him a little bit because i was told uh coming out of college that barnett of all the pass rushers charles Har edge rushers not tackles um people told me that barnett would fit the wide nine the jim schwartz system the best because of his bend he was supposedly yep. gonna have a leap bend but the athleticism just wasn't there i guess to match the bend and and he never really developed into to what they wanted him to be. So uh, to but add, it does follow the trend of taking a pass rusher and this is a, a top 15 pick for them. Yeah. It, it, it just, it, it went up not working out. Um, I would tell you just to add to this is that they had Timmy Jernigan who they acquired via the trade. So, and they, at, at the end, then they had Vinny Curry who was in his fifth year, BG who was going mm -hmm. strong. Chris Long, who was in the twilight of his career as a, as a, DPR designated pass rusher and Barnett. Stephen Means was just a special teams player. But the bottom line is, man, if they would have just gone with Jonathan Allen, think about it, him and Cox playing together, making it, just figuring out a way to make it work. Timmy yeah. Jernigan, because of the back injury, wound, wound up not having a long career. Yeah, no, good point. All right, 2018. Well, there's really nobody to talk about because they trade away their pick. Um, why did they trade that 2018 pick? Who am I thinking? That was a great draft for them, but they of the players that they had, they went mm -hmm. up nailing all of them. They they were they even Matt Pryor, but they went up trading away. And the next the next year mm -hmm. was again mm -hmm. a miss. They they stayed true to their offensive line, and here's what they did: they they drafted for as we were told then they were getting a future left tackle to finally replace Jason Peters, and it was Andrea Dillard. <laughs> Shorter arms. Now, the only player they passed up on, and I don't have a problem with it because he didn't start off his career well, was Titus Howard from the Texans. Mm -hmm. But it was just the player overall. The, the guy was kind of raw. 
was not a two position player. He was really strictly left tackle. As we later learned, he wasn't even a guard. He, he didn't want to play it. He didn't want to play ta- right tackle. So, although they later play him at guard late in his career with the Eagles and it just, it really wasn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Uh, they went for need here and it, it missed. It just, the, the way we heard it then, they were, this was like going to happen. They were getting a left tackle and it just happened to be Dillard. Right. Right. And now the trend, Adam, we're seeing anything lower than 20 is where they, you know, Danny Watkins, 23 didn't work out. Marcus Smith, 26, we just talked about, didn't work out. And here's 22, Andre Dillard, a position that they typically have been good with, did not work out. So uh, I just find that ironic because they do pick 22nd here in the draft coming up. So let's get to the year after that. Actually, before we do, we want to tell you this. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, or stress less, HelloFresh is is here to help you do all three. Say hello to your most delicious year yet with fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you're going to love delivered right to your door. You've resolved to actually sit down and eat dinner around the table. What do you do about those nights when your schedule is jam-packed? That's when you turn to HelloFresh's lineup of quick and easy meals, including their 15-minute recipes designed to help you minimize mealtime stress. Those are our types of meals. Every time we eat from HelloFresh, whether it's quick and easy or one of their standard meals, we're blown away. By the freshness, taste, and overall quality. So many great options. We have tried them all. We love them all. Here's their best offer yet. If you go to HelloFresh.com slash Eagles Free and use that promo code Eagles Free, you get free breakfast for life. That's one breakfast item per box while you have an active subscription. Free breakfast for life at HelloFresh.com slash Eagles Free with the promo code Eagles Free. Act now for America's number one meal kit. All right, 2020. Mm, a lot of people don't like this draft, Adam, just even thinking about it. Yep. So they were drafting, as we reported them, they were drafting for speed no matter what. That's why we put it out six to eight weeks before the draft. It's probably going to be Rager. They love his returnability, best punt returner in 2019, maybe in college football mm-hmm. in terms of punt. Explosive. Guy should have been a second round pick, unfortunately. It, not only did they pass up Justin Jefferson, who could be a Hall of Famer, I forgot that they that Brandon Ayuk was in that draft. He went later to the Niners in the in the, in the round. This is the ten one of the tendencies that Howie's had. Sometimes he gets it right, more often than not, he gets it wrong. When he's drafting for a specific need, he misses. Dillard to replace Peters, miss. Rigger for speed. Remember how slow they were in 2019? Mm-hmm. Miss. Barnett, they wanted an edge rusher, miss. Now, Car- N- Car- Wentz was – see, it's interesting. He did – how he did a brilliant job with all the trades up in his first year getting control back. And, yes, it was a need, but he also was a great – he was thought to be a terrific prospect. Mm-hmm. Whereas Diller and Barnett, there were some concerns with certain areas. You talk about the ankle flexion, which was important, um, but they wound up missing for, for a variety of reasons. But that was a need pick. So you go through 2020. It's very apparent here when he goes for need – it's the 2014. He had, uh, Marcus Smith. They wanted an edge rusher. Miss. Yep. Now that was a series of problems where they every player they try to get. You talk about the trade, which is a good point. They try to trade up. They they couldn't get up there to do it. Uh, they couldn't trade back, so they missed on. They didn't get Cooks, and a couple other players. And then you you fast forward now to 2020. The, the, they were drafting for speed, and it got them. Yeah, absolutely, and and. Uh... Yeah, it wasn't draft for need position. They certainly could have been fine with either Ayuk or Justin Jefferson, but I know uh, yeah, they went for speed there and it did not work out for them. Uh, 2021, Howie Roseman's still in control here. And again, this is just shows you the difference when they pick lower than 20 or, you know, yeah, below 20. It's, it's a roll of dice when they're in top 10, which you should hit, but you still see, you still see it like John Ross going ninth to the Bengals, right? You still see mistakes by teams in the top 10, the Eagles, they take Devontae Smith next year, 2021, really good spot, traded up to get him. Um, and this is a guy that they that – everything worked from where they had him ranked to where they're taking him, and it's worked out. Yeah, I mean, you look at Jordan Howard's regime, defensive lineman, offensive lineman, receivers, and then a, one quarterback in the first round, and that was Wentz. But getting back to this, so this was late in Alshon Jeffrey's tenure with the Eagles. We knew that he didn't run very well. At this point, never speak guy anyway. Uh, the room was very young in 2020. Travis Fulgham, who had the flash and didn't work out, they wound mm-hmm. up cutting him later on. John Hightower didn't work out. Quest Watkins, as a fourth or fifth receiver, worked out. They missed on Ortega Whiteside. And they Greg Warder kept coming off and on as a slot receiver and a punt returner. 
and Rager. So they had to, they, they, unfor- look, fortunately, unfortunately, the, depending on your point of view, uh, they had to do something and they wound up doing it. And as you said, they went with Devonte Smith and it turned out to be to this point, an absolute home run, which quite frankly is going to be the guy's an absolute stud. So that season they had Rager still Greg Ward, Ortega White's out of Watkins. And they, they, now they, that time, the one time he traded up for need, boom, nailed it. There you go. All right. Um, here we go to 2022, and this is sort of the outlier for the Eagles, Adam. It's in that they're picking in top 15. They stay true to positional value. It's not like they absolutely needed DT. They had some some bodies there, but they trade up for Jordan Davis. They love the, the testing. They love the Georgia bloodlines and everything. And look, he might wind up being a good player, but so far after two years – Right, you're hoping that he turns out to be a lot better than what he's shown so far. You know, the thing with Jordan Davis was I, I can't say it was a just a need. It was just a guy that they they really liked. They had a high grade on. Like with Smith, I should mention I, I should have mentioned this before. He was the highest player on the board, and they traded up for him. Where Rager was not, but they they traded up for need, and that crushed them. They missed mm-hmm. on that. Mm-hmm. Jordan Davis here was the was a very highly graded player. The only player they passed on was Kyle Hamilton. Now, when I say only player in that area, Kyle Hamilton had a really rough rookie season. Then they figured it out with the new defensive coordinator, who's now the uh, the Seahawks head coach, Mike Mc, uh, McDaniel, Mike McDonald. But the bottom line is, as you said, Davis is flashed. He's not been consistent. This is a major year for him. You got to get that right and. How he wanted this player, he he met a lot of ana- a lot of analytical benchmarks, and boy did he get off to a good start last season. People forget about that. He actually was really really dominant for like the first four or five weeks. Mm-hmm. Condition became a problem. A technique was terrible for the second half. This is when he's playing too high, and it just was a disaster. So he's got to be better, or they're going to wind up missing on it. Yeah, a really big year coming up here for Jordan Davis. Absolutely. And that brings us to last year's draft. The Eagles had two picks. They had, uh, well, what they wound up picking overall and uh, was 10th and th- or 9th and 30th. 9th, they got Jalen Carter, 30th, uh, Nolan Smith. So this is like an Eagles draft, like to the T, right? It's like you had a top 10 pick, you picked a pass rushing defensive tackle. You had a bottom end first round pick, you took an edge rusher who's a little bit undersized, like this, a lot undersized, actually. But either way, the point is, this is like vintage Eagles drafting right here. Yeah, I mean, again, it's it's drafting for the future. This is why they did it, and for a, a current and future need. Carter was had a terrific rookie season. Did tell off late, and mm-hmm. you, you you know this is his first full off season as a starter. Uh, this now they you could say they drafted for need, but guess what? He was the highest player. They traded up to get him. He was the highest player on the board. In fact, he was their highest graded player, I believe, for the draft, mm-hmm. and that's why they did it. The, the, so, like Smith, he was the highest graded player to the left, and they trade up to get him, and they, and they nailed that. That's a trend, though, how he's gotten, where he trades. So this is another trend that we figured out as we've done this exercise here. When they tr- More often than not, when he trades up for the highest graded player, they get it right. When they don't, when they trade up for need and not the highest graded player, boy, do they miss. Yeah, absolutely. Um, good stuff. We got a few conclusions that we'll, we'll draw through all this. First, we want to pause and just hear a word. Quick word from our friends at Sky Motor Cars. Sky Motor Cars in Westchester is a different sort of dealership. All it takes is one look at their Highline pre-owned vehicles that people all over the country want to see. Owner Brett Schilder makes sure you don't spend a dime of your money before you purchase the car. Sky Motor Cars allows you to make all the decisions regarding your next vehicle. At Sky Motor Cars, you never have to spend more than necessary. Visit SkyMotorCars.com today or call 610-918-7225. All right, and if you happen to stop in at Sky Motor Cars in Westchester, PA, make sure you tell them Adam just sent you. You will get a great deal. So you just nailed one conclusion, Adam, about trading up, trading down. I mean, it's also clear that when they pick top 10, top 15, ordinarily they're on par. I mean, a lot of their top 10, top 15 picks worked out for them. When they pick lower than 20 21 22 20 that's when we've seen the dillards that's when we've seen rager that's when we've seen danny watkins this is not their home run territory and that's kind of important right now as the eagles get ready to at least pick where they're slotted at 22 overall 
And, and Marcus Smith, I mean, you add them yeah. all in there. So, so I guess what you're telling us here as we go through the tendencies and, and conclusions and in intel is that when they can't get out of the pick in the 20s, the bus rate is up, which, by the way, would make sense because there are rarely more than 18 to 19 first-round graded players by any team. Someone's got to make a pick in the 20s. So, I mean, they're going to be 32 first-round picks. Right. But those guys tend to be graded as second-rounders. So that's the problem. That's a good point. And then when he, when he, when they trade up for their highest-graded player, they pretty much get it right. And I believe, yeah, in fact, I know that. They had Graham over J J JPP. And I, I know it's debatable. JPP's had a, more sacks, but Graham has outlasted him. Yeah. And it, so it so that's it. I mean, it's pretty much it. The, the intel and the tendencies are pretty clear here. When they draft their highest graded player, they're most likely to get it right. When they reach for need, boy, they get it wrong. And it's I don't know that since how he's been GM, it there's been anything different, to be honest no. with you. No, you're making a good point. Like you can, you don't have to get a superstar at 21, 22. You can get a guy who gives you maybe a second contract and is a key contributor, but they've missed badly on those. Oh, like, you know, Rager did not see a second contract with the team. Obviously, Marcus Smith did not see a second contract with the team. Danny Watkins. I mean, these guys didn't even make it through their their rookie deals, is my point. Uh, Marcus Smith. So mm -hmm. that that's really, it, it's not just they didn't become what you wanted. They really didn't even come close to your expectations. So. Correct. Um, if anything, maybe the conclusion is with the Eagles picking at 22, they'd be pretty good if they just move up two or three spots. But I don't know uh, if Howie, without a third round pick, wants to uh, get into that territory. But remember, they did pick up an extra second, a future second round in um, uh, whatever trade they made that uh, recently that they got. Oh, the, the, the Hassan well, potential, right. right? It's a potential yeah. second. Yeah, it's it's, right yeah, it's, a, it's a third that could be coming to yeah. either way. It's a it's a future asset, and we'll see if if Howie you know uses that to do some dealing. That was a good trip down memory lane, and hopefully we gave everybody some good perspective on what the Eagles are looking at as they get ready to pick 22nd overall. That's going to do it for this episode of Inside the Birds, the leading podcast in Eagles intel. As always, we thank you for flying with us inside the birds.